Hello and welcome to everyone who's been to one of my videos before and to any new people as well. I'm Alex. I usually do quite a lot of knitting but I have been doing a bit of sewing recently. Um, so I feel a bit like this is sacrilege. I've just put my tea bag in the milk with the water because I was in a bit of a rush. Is that wrong? It doesn't really taste right but look my little Vinax marked mug we won't be having the Christmas market in Birmingham this year so that'll be a bit sad I don't I don't think so anyway because of lockdown but at least I can drink from my little mug and it'll be cozy and nostalgic um so first off I just thought I'd show you I'm not sponsored or anything but I'm just going to show you some of the creams that I use for my hands before I start crafting. <laughs> um, this one is really good and actually I'm just going to use it now because my hands are really dry because I've been outside in the cold. I've had about three jumpers on today. Um, so lots, <laughs> lots and lots of hand cream. Uh, okay, now I've put too much hand cream on. <laughs> yeah, yuck. Right. Yes, that's my favourite hand cream. Mmm, smells of shea butter and stuff. Um, so it's been exciting to try some little projects this week, just sort of little satisfying makes. Um, and I wanted to show them to you. So um, if you want to see any of them, like some more photos, you can follow me on Instagram and Ravelry um, and Facebook. Instagram, Ravelry, Facebook, Etsy. Yeah, I think that's everywhere, YouTube. So follow me if you want to. Um, so today I'll be showing some Wensleydale wool. I'll be talking a little bit about some of my interests, looking at some project bags. Uh, and is it too early for Christmas? Especially if you have to make things for Christmas. I think I should have started earlier. Um, right. So. This one has just been a bit of fun. So sometimes I buy Wensleydale wool from Home Farm Wensleydales. And um, every time I get some yarn, they send me like a little bit of some locks. So this time I decided to actually buy some. And um, and I made a little pom pom for a hat, and it's really cool. You could use them for dolls' hair, or they like dye loads of different colours of these locks. So I was just designing an idea for a welly cuff or a sock, and I wanted to use something with um. So when you hold two things together, it makes it a bit thicker, and this is a Texel DK, so that's nice and chunky. And this is Wensleydale, and it's really strong and it's really soft, and it just makes a really nice um, fabric. So that's the first time I've tried holding something together like that. And I know a lot of people do it with, um, I don't know if it's Stephen West Designs or Le Bien Aimé yarns, like you use an alpaca or something fluffy like mohair held together with something else um, and that seems like quite popular and I thought oh I, I'll use my Wensley there because it's a little bit you see look at my let's get this look see my big hands but doubled up or with DK it's really easy to use so last time on my podcast I mentioned interweave which is uh, a website that has like posts about weaving, crochet, crafts, that sort of stuff. So there was an article by Kate Atherley called um, Five Ways to Work a Toe for Socktoberfest. So I kind of miss Socktober, but now I'm <laughs> seeing loads of things about Socktober and thinking, oh, wow, that sock's cool. Um, so I've put that in the show notes, the article, but what I've been doing is I've decided to just make up some toes. So this week I've done a wedge toe, which is, uh, <laughs> it's 
so it's decreased is decreased at the either either oh I'm not really There's the wedge toe and you can see it's decreased at either side um, and then I've gathered it at the top but I think I need a better technique for gathering it. I don't really do that very often. Um, it's quite loose where I've, graf where I've grafted it, not gathered it, where I've grafted it. Um, but I really like the style of that. So the wedge toe that's a good one. It's quite nice to just do a little part of a project when you've, you're you figuring out something. Because if I had to do a whole sock and spend ages and then get to the end and sort of rework the toe, you know, it's energy and time. Um, it's a little bit like, like a climbing route. So when you climb, uh, like I go to a climbing wall, and if there's a problem in a section of the wall, I'll I'll probably try the whole climb but then I'll go back to that problem and or if I didn't get past it I'll just focus on that little problem get up to it an easy way sort that problem out and then go back to the start and then do a clean run of the whole wall um so that made me think of socks <laughs> if I just do the toe then when I actually get to doing the sock I'll have a clean run at that sock and it'll be it'll feel easier like there was less energy on it does that make sense anyway i managed to talk about climbing in my podcast and i miss climbing because my climbing center's closed so that's uh yeah anyway right next speaking of climbing uh this is one of the tops that i usually wear when I go climbing and it's got um, a blank periodic table on it because I got it from the British Science Festival which I went to last year which was amazing it was in at the University of Warwick which is Coventry way um, but I went there with my dad and it was really cool Professor Alice Roberts was there we got free parking free tickets there was street food and they had like this amazing marquee sort of tent thing and um yeah we got like free stuff free t-shirt <laughs> um and yeah some really inspirational research projects alice roberts is the president of the british science association so she did this speech about how in times gone by like francis bacon's time all the scientists were pessimistic and sort of there was an, an air of despondency and melancholy and it was up to scientists to find a way to improve technology and and make a better future and it was just really inspirational and I kind of thought it was quite relevant now anyway so I've put a little link in because I thought that was really cool um and yeah that doesn't have anything to do with knitting but it was really fun and I'm gonna put the speech in the show notes because Alice Roberts is really cool um, right I'm gonna talk about fabric now so It tastes like Earl Grey or something. Why is it fragrant? I don't know. Oh, it's the tea bag of milk. What was I thinking? So I haven't been to Frumble Fabrics online for ages, but they're this local company and I bought this bias binding from them. So when I came to look for bias binding recently, I thought, oh, Frumble Fabrics, they gave me a Mao Am Stripe the first time I ordered from them. Let's get some more bias binding from them. 
easily swayed um so it's basically to go on this project bag and i mentioned it on instagram that i was going to make it a drawstring bag so whoop, there you go uh, and i think it's a perfect size for a sock for socks um you can fit a couple of socks in there and a few maybe a skein of wool some paper pen whatever you take with you i was thinking of putting a little tag on it with some sort of see-through material so that you can write what's in it because I don't know if you ever find this, but like if I have a couple of project bags around, I would I lost something the other day and was like, oh, where is it? I'm never going to find that again. Well, it was in just a plain white bag and if I'd had a label on it saying cowl or something, then I would have known. So I thought that would be quite a practical thing to have on a project bag. Um... Yeah, and I, so I ordered some other kind of 90s abstract art kind of stuff from um, from from More Fabrics, and they're so lovely. If you go on their page, it's from, oh wait, um, yeah, frumble.co.uk, and it's got, um, their names are Matt and Monica, and they're like running a race, and they've sewed all these pom-poms onto them. Themselves and uh, and then they've got another picture where the guy's using a crank handle sewing machine outside. Um, so they look really they look really cool. But I think that's maybe that's near Digbeth that they work. Um, and it's quite cool over there. Like it's a bit funky kind of place. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I love that. This is a Wensleydale BFL. Can you see how shiny it is? I think that was the exhaust from the Wensleydale BFL. It's got quite a nice luster. So that's just for my paper chain party. And add some little extra ones onto that. Um, but yeah, I'm just slowly adding to that when, as and when I find a few scraps of old stuff and if I have a good time while I'm making my dodgy cup of tea. Um, and I've had to change my hashtag for my woolly paper chain party because Instagram thought it was a bit too political. Hashtag woolly paper chain party. I, I mean, really, knitting woolly paper chains, it's not very political, but um, it does have the word party in it. So um, I've changed it to hashtag woolly paper chain party, T-E-A. So um, look that one up, but I'll put it in the show notes. Um, Oh yeah, so other um, Christmas decorations, I'll just show you my Christmas trees that I've been making. Look at that! So this is Len, Clen, get my Welsh right, Clen Merino, um, and I think I got it from Makers, M-A-K-E-R-S-S, -S, and they do the Merino packs, and I spun it up on the spinning wheel that I borrowed and yeah with some len I just I didn't spin it together I kind of just once I'd spun up the merino I kind of just added the bat so it was spinning up together but it gave this kind of snowflakey feel to it I think um so yeah I really enjoyed making that and I might put I might put a ribbon on it for going on the tree or I might use it as, oh, maybe I could make it, oh, ooh, I could make it into bunting. Yeah, tree bunting, that'd be cute. Oh, good idea. Okay, these are some of the walls that I've used for the next bits. So I had this John Arburn Merino. Oh, what is it Merino? It's Harvest Hues. So I think it has Exmoor, uh, you can 
can go on John Arbon website. I think it's jarbon.com. Um, but check out that. It's quite nice and shiny. And they do a sock yarn in that. And actually, now that I've knitted with it, um, I wasn't sure if my spinning would be good enough, but it's, it's, yeah, it's good. Yay. It's good. I think so, anyway. There you go. That's all right, isn't it? Oh, don't look at the back. Um, and this one. This is naturally dyed with crocuses and daffodils. I only did a little bit because I didn't have many daffodils. So, and a teeny tiny tree that's covered in snow. And this one is the Owl About Yarn Cuddly Owl. And it's got these lovely speckles in it. It's a superwash merino and it's called Forest Wildflowers. So I think Jenny, uh, I'm pretty sure she like really likes purple. I think that's a thing. <laughs> like, I think that's a thing she's known for. She likes purple. Um, and I really like the green in this as well. And that's, um, that's really soft. This is the tree that I've made for the Mr. Grinch make along with quirky Monday craft cast. And I'm not sure I've written down her name. I think it's Nadi Nadi Tarani um, on Instagram, but you can find her on quirky Monday craft cast on YouTube. And she's so much fun. And on her Instagram pictures, she's like going, and she's dressed up as the Grinch and it's a make-along. So I'll just read you the rules. This is a make-along to celebrate my favourite bad guy gone good. The hashtag Grinch. There are two ways to join in. One, use Grinch themed materials or patterns. Or two, use green as your main colour. Whips are welcome. If you can spin it to be Grinchy, it qualifies. But in an American accent because... She's from Florida. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's my little tree. And I was going to try and make it point pointy. But I haven't quite figured out that in the pattern yet. So I might try it again. Um, and I did a sort of red and white because of Dr. Seuss. So the other day, my mum got a yoga mat. And look how much packaging we got with it. This was all scrunched up in the box with this like one tiny thing. Well, it wasn't that tiny, but you know, it's a lot of paper. So I thought I'll just iron it. And there, it's the perfect amount for, um, if I want to do stamps on it, I can use it as wrapping paper for Christmas. I'm so eco friendly. Uh, yeah, there's stuff on the back there. Um, yeah, does anyone else keep their wrapping paper? My aunt used to do that. I used to iron the wrapping paper, but oh, there are some really nice wrapping papers out there, aren't there? So, why not? Maybe I'll get the old potato stampers out. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you again next time. All right, have a great week. Bye.